driver says I don't need him now. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I'd never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. Huh, boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. You'll see. The next morning, the firelighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warm spread through his boiler. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the mud, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out. car's chance had come. Hurrah! Hurrah! They laughed, and banging their buffers, they pushed him down the hill. On! On! yelled the cars. I've got to stop! I've got to stop! groaned James. Disaster lay ahead. Guard, please. But before he could check them, the truck surged forward. On, on, they cried. Help, help, whistled Percy. The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Peep, peep, yeah! look out. <laughs> The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Control, another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that. James was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. It's too late. Doc groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. <laughs> <laughs> 